Well, welcome everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us again for the Truth and Justice Vigil. We've been gathering since April, every Tuesday, um, initially started as some support to one another as Dharma friends through the trial of Derek Chauvin for the murder of George Floyd. Um, and all of the just heartache that came along with this realization that we're no longer able to turn away from of the hatred and harm that subsequently is enacted. Um, and the intention was to bring in voices of um, Dharma teachers who have had lived experiences as African descended people. Um, a couple of years ago, I was able to attend a gathering for Black Dharma teachers um, and made some wonderful friendships and connections. And I think all of the teachers that have joined us on a Tuesday evening are teachers that I was able to spend time with and get to know at that gathering. And so it's been just a delightful treat for me and I understand for many of you to hear the voices of uh, different Dharma teachers than we typically hear when we tune in at Common Ground or show up in person now. And joining us this, this evening, um, returning, is Valerie Mason John, who also goes by uh, the name Bimalasara. And since uh, Vimala Sara was with us last, she has published a collection of work entitled African Wisdom, African with a K. And I am going to put a link in the chat for the promo. It's a five minute video, so um, watch it at your leisure um, and by all means, pick up the book. Uh, Vimala Sara will be joining us uh, right around 6.30. She uh, is challenged, as many of us are, with our calendars and overlapping um, and has uh, asked that I just start us off with a meditation. So we'll sit for a, about a half an hour together. And I uh, expect that at that time, Bimala Sara will be joining with us. So settle into a posture that invites relaxation and still alertness. Fine, straight. Shoulders drop and relax. And allowing the nervous system to settle. Follow the rhythm of the breath. Allowing the other sense activities to fall into the background, the sound, the thoughts. Simply resting here in the present moment. Interested in what's opening, rising. Mm 
noticing where we're arriving with an agenda or a story, expectations. And I invite you to let that lay at rest just now. I fully in this breath with curiosity. Not needing more, not looking for more than what's present right now. Perhaps it's simply the rise and fall of the belly, of the rhythm of the breath. Warmth or coolness of the hands at rest. Relaxed in the conditions just as they are. Very pleasant and pleasant. No, neither. Content and the awareness.
holding this intention to stay right here to receive the flow of experience of tenderness of kindness and compassion With a soft and open heart. That understands the ever changing nature of experience. and personal nature of experience. And the suffering of being a human being. Staying right here with it all, not turning away.
to all for your practice. And like magic, we open our eyes and the wise and beautiful Vimalasara has joined us. Welcome, Vimalasara. Hi. Hello, beautiful people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How was your practice? Let's hear. Uh, how was your practice? Okay. Um, anybody else want to share before we move on? Well, I'll just I'll just share that um, oftentimes the meditation that I offer is one for myself, and so today's was was that really and just this attempt at a kind, gentle reminder um, that it's the practice is just staying right here. It doesn't have to be pleasant or desirable, <laughs> or uh, the practice is just staying mm -hmm. interested mm -hmm. no matter mm -hmm. the aching body or the distracted mm -hmm. mind or being disappointed or unsatisfied that mm -hmm. being able to stay with it is is the practice <laughs> thank you for for, sh for sharing that stacy and this thing of how do we stay with it yeah we often hear um, Dharma teachers, meditation teachers, mindfulness teachers sit with it, sit with the pain, stay with it. And who wants to sit with it? Raise your hand. Who wants to sit with all of it? Yeah. <laughs> Why would we want to sit with it? You know, of course we want to turn away from it. And what do we, what do we mean by sitting with it? And often we often hear um, people say it's just so overwhelming it's just not possible for me to sit with it and if it becomes really overwhelming then actually you're not really sitting with the sensations in the body what's actually happening is is that you're sitting with what's going on in the head and that can be really overwhelming yeah and so this thing of how can we drop back into the body because there's just a tendency you know it's you know, when we're in physical pain, it's so much easier to go into the head and to be screaming in the head than to actually be in, you know, in, in, in the body. And yet when we go up into the head, that's what's the, that's the most overwhelming. Yeah. And in fact, sometimes some people I can remember with a with a tooth, it would be like there'd be so much going on in my head that I'd wiggle the tooth so I could get in touch with the pain to let go of all what's going on it on on in the head. Yeah. So what we're going to do is we'll would we'll, I'll take you. That's great. So we've done a good grounding. And so thank you for that, Stacey. And I'm going to take you through a practice that I've developed. And as Stacey says, it's it's interesting giving herself her own medicine because I, I, I was commissioned to create uh, 10 meditations and and then and it's a very new one and and you know I've been doing it and I you know people have got benefit from it and I was thinking oh maybe I should be doing this myself giving myself this medicine and actually it really does it, it really does work and you can do it on the cushions and off the cushion so we do the practice we talk about it and then we'll kind of see what is it that you wanted to explore today because this is your this is your time this is your session and so it's you know sometimes we can come with an agenda so my one bit of agenda is is that we'll do this practice called rust it's called rust if you think about how the mind can get really rusty and it gets gets really covered up and how can we begin to move the rust off the mind so that the mind heart can be really uh coming from a place from the four Brahma Viharas, it's said that actually if our mind heart is in its pure natural state, then what would flow forth from it would be this practice of loving kindness, of 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 metta, of unlimited friendliness, would be this place of karana, compassion. And not compassion just for, for out there in the world, but compassion for ourselves and compassion 
for the rest of the world would, would recognise this interconnectedness. And then there would be the, the, the uh, mudita, the mudita sympathetic joy, where we would have so much joy for people's successes. We'd have so much joy for people doing really well, you know. Um, this is where, you know, working with the jealousy and, and envy it's in this world, it's so easy for us to have a jealousy and envy and just like, wow, you know, how come they get all the good things and not me? And so this natural way of this heart flow, flowing with mudita. And then, of course, uh, upeka, which is equipoise, equanimity, that we would be able to come from a place of of equipoise, of equanimity. And this isn't a place where we don't feel anything. Of course, it's not saying that we don't feel anything. It would just be that we we wouldn't make it mean anything. You know, this is this is the thing. This is why the mind gets really rusty. This is why it gets covered up. This is why one of the reasons why we're not able to come from those four sublime abodes. Sometimes they're called the four immeasurables. Sometimes they're called the Brahma Viharas. And um, it's 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 like things with this this with this thing of making everything mean something it's like we're walking down the road and we wave hello to somebody and somebody doesn't wave back and we make it mean something you know we make an appointment with somebody somebody cancels and we make it mean something we text a message to somebody and we don't hear back from them in five minutes we make it mean something and then they don't get back in half an hour. We make it mean even something even more. And they don't get back to us in 24 hours. We have created a full blown story. So we're continually making meaning out of everything. We are meaning making machines and how can we stop making meaning? How can we begin to start making metta and making karana and making mudita and upeka? It's possible but what we do is we make meaning which completely destroys the whole fabric of those uh, of those four sublime abodes so in a way we, we you know sometimes you know even if we weren't making the, you know making uh, well if we were making the four sublime abodes we could get to a point where life could be meaningless and not in a nihilistic way, but actually we would just stop making meaning out of things and life would be very, very different. So this practice called rust, um, you can, you know, however, it's not like you've got to sit in your perfect meditation pose with your fingers like this and your legs crossed, etc. So rust, so just... Um, dropping back onto whatever is supporting the body as we enter into this practice. It's a collective practice as well as a unique practice. And really see if you can have the sense of the mind dropping into the heart let me see if you can feel that visceral, the mind dropping into the heart. The mind, heart dropping into the body, settling into the body. As we enter into this new practice called rust. So R. R stands for recognize. I'm going to recognize that perhaps when we're meditating and all these thoughts and we get really distracted that we're just recognizing that we are activated. Just simply recognizing that energy is moving through the body. So you might even want to work with something that happened earlier in the day. Yeah. And just recognize that actually it's just activation, just energy moving through the body without not applying any meaning to it. So, you know, it may be we had a conversation and there's all these thoughts and just, just 
let go of identifying with the thoughts and recognizing that we're just simply activated. Yeah. That energy is arising in the body, which may be a bit unpleasant or even pleasant. You stands for understanding. So we simply understand that we're just caught in a story. That's all what's going on. So it's not about giving yourself a hard time. It's just really simply knowing that you're just caught in a story and we all get caught in stories. Yeah. Understanding that we're caught in a story full of perceptions, full of judgments, full of making it mean something. Yeah. S stands for sensations. So here we can either sit with sensations, we can stand with sensations, we can stretch with sensations, even sing with sensations. So search the body and just become aware of sensations in the body. Yeah, you can move the body with sensations. We don't have to kind of sit there solid experiencing the sensations. You can move the body, you can rock the body, you can sway the body, you can stretch the body and just really dropping into the body and just noticing sensations. And T stands for trust. Trust that this too shall pass. And if we're still caught in the story, we're still experiencing activation, then just ask the story to relax. You can literally just say, just, can you just relax a moment? Or ask the story to step back a moment. Yeah. And just trust that this too shall pass. So R, just simply recognizing activation, recognizing energy moving in the body. Perhaps it's uncomfortable, unpleasant, could be even pleasant, neutral. You understanding, understanding, getting it. it all that's happening is just caught in a story, caught in a loop. It's a familiar story. You most probably know this story. It's an old, old story. Just understand that. Yeah. Yeah. Story full of judgments, full of perceptions, full of meaning. And S. Sensations. Search the body. Become aware of sensations in the body. This is what we're moving away from. We're moving away from the sensations in the body. So you can sit with the body, sway the body, stretch the body, stand with the body so that you can really allow yourself to have some freedom with these sensations. And T, trust. Trust this too shall pass. Sometimes the story so much we're still caught in it, so we can just say, please relax, just just chill out, chillax a moment. Yeah. And turn it down, turn turn the story down. Yeah. As if you were turning the volume down on your cell phone, turn the volume down. 
so that you can just trust that this too shall pass. And then take a deep breath in and expanding the breathing throughout the whole body. Take a deep breath in and expanding the breathing throughout the whole body. And then connecting back to us on the black mirror on the flat screen. How was that for people? Any, any freedom, any relief or more misery? How was that for people? Thanks, um, Patricia, for sharing that because actually that is, um, that is, is a trap which can happen to many people who meditate. In fact, you know, um, many people experience being in blissful states 24 seven and get really attached to that. And actually that it's, there's a bi spiritual bypassing which is going on. And so on one way, it's a really great adaptation to be able to, to be in those joyful places and also know that there's activation that, and that there's an attachment to the pleasant. You know, so again, if we think of the three feelings, pleasant, unpleasant, neutral, and we play a game of craving, you know, when, that, when the pleasantness goes, we, we want it to come back, yeah? and we can get intoxicated by the stories. So in a way, one of the ways of working with it is actually is to, again, you could actually ask that story to relax and see, see what's going on underneath it. Just relax, just even, and let it know it can always come back, even if you just say, just relax and so let it know that I'm not, you're not asking it to say, I want to get rid of all these these pleasant stories all the time. Let, let, let the pleasant story know it can actually come back. So you're not retiring it, you know. You're just, just giving it some time off so that you can really begin to explore what's actually going on um, underneath all of that, yeah. And you might be surprised at what you might actually discover um, underneath that, yeah. Because, you know, if it's a story then actually you've moved into, you know, there, there is this, there's, there's the, the, the pleasant stories and there's the pleasant sensations in the body. And in, in a way, you want to be able to stay with the pleasant sensations in the body. And many people find it very difficult to stay with pleasant sensations in the body, okay? For all sorts of reasons. If you're somebody who, was, who had sexual trauma as, as a... As, as a child or as an adolescence, you know, we know when the body is touched, um, you know, touched um, inappropriately, but if it's, and, and if it's touched in a particular way, the body respe responds with uh, pleasant sensations. There's absolutely nothing one can do about that. And so then it gets hardwired. Pleasant is, is bad, yeah? Pleasant, pleasant isn't good. And so therefore we spend a whole lifetime fleeing from pleasant sensations in the body yeah so so it's really important to know that we 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 move away from unpleasant we move away from pleasant and we move away from neutral each of those hedonic tones or what we call vedana each of those um feeling tones in the body can be activating yeah so i don't know if that can give you any help with that does that make sense that's fantastic i mean it's 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 just so fantastic that you 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 say that because in this that, that's why you know with the the r we recognize activation and we recognize it's just energy okay 
is energy moving in the body. So of course we don't get rid of it. And what I want to say is, is that, um, you know, a really, uh, I'll secularize it a bit, but the, the Honeyball Sutta is a really great um, sutta to explore because as, as, as I said that, um, you know, we have these three feelings. So you, we've got six, six sense doors, okay? And um, an external substance or an internal substance has contact with one or more of the sense doors, okay? So it may be, I don't know, if, if I use a, an addiction model, you know, uh, let's see, well, let's just, cream cake, you see a cream cake, your nose has contact with the smell of the baked cake and your eyes has contact with the cake. Vedana is going to arise. You cannot avoid feeling tone. Whenever a, a, a substance has uh, contact with one or more of the sense doors, there's always going to be feeling. Okay? Can't avoid that. There's going to be feeling. And so, in a way, and, and again, and that feeling can be the beginning of some kind of activation. You know, it, it's like we can salivate, something happens and it can, it can happen that, that, that quickly. And for, for myself, I had to realize that, you know, there were certain things I would see and I would just salivate. It would just happen like that. I smell, nose, contact, salivation, you know. So there's activation happening in the body so we don't get rid of it. And this is why, you know, can we learn to be kind to it, compassionate to it? And can we be equanimous with it? But actually what happens is, is we make it mean we get a bit terrified, we want to move away from it, and we go into the, the thinking and we go into the story. Yeah, and we get caught, and we get caught there. And it's so difficult to come back home to the body, which as I say, in, and the reason why it's so difficult to come back home to the body is because at a very young age, we most probably left the body, we fled the body, we turned off all the sense doors, we closed all the sense doors, nobody's home, nobody wants to be home, and this is the practice, part of the practice, if we go back to the, the, the practice of the Anapanasati, it's all there, the practice of the mindfulness of breathing, first, first tetrad is becoming aware of the body, and, and it's not just it's 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 you know being coming mindful of the body we begin to investigate the body what's going on in the body and we become aware of energy arising in the body the first tetrad so so it's great no we're not asking you to to get rid of activation not even asking you to get rid of the thoughts the thoughts will go on their own if we don't keep on feeding them i know there's the practice of feeding the demons and there is the practice of starving the demons too, you know. So, you know, we're not saying you've got to push these thoughts away because, you know, if we resist, what happens? You know, if we resist, it persists. So it's, it's the, the, the practice is, is, is not to identify, not to make it me, mine and I. You know, that teaching, as a Buddha said, this is not me, this is not mine, this is not I. And that can be a really great thing. You know, sometimes it's saying, if we're activated, take a breathing space, meditate. Come on, when we're activated, you know, the last thing we want to do is sit down and meditate or sit down and take a nice deep breath, you know. It's, 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 it's the hardest thing we can do, but we might be able to say, this is not me, this is not mine, this is not I. And which is why I got you to move as well, because it might be just simply moving the body, yeah? Rather than sitting down, which is like, you know, so we sit with sensations, we can stretch with sensations, we can sway with sensation, we can stand with sensations, just, just move it so that you have this somatic experience or somatic releasing in the body yeah well I think again it's it's a really good good question and part of the skillfulness is is there's a word called hri which is um, positive shame and so it's this this remorse so so we may react but we we it, it hurts us and that's a skillfulness that it hurts us and so I hear that it hurt you 
that you, you snapped and you're human. And so in a way we pay attention to that and just think, well, next time, can I be different? And actually commit to be really different rather than giving ourselves a hard time. That's the practice. It's, it's, remember the practice is a training. Yeah. So we start from where we, where, where we are at. Yeah. And, and the practice is to be, be kind to ourselves as well. And this whole thing, um, it's, you spoke about um, that kind of emptiness and, and it is, it's, it can be really easy to fall into the nihilism and just think, well, you know, if I go into emptiness, does that mean that, that I'm annihilated, that I'm not there? And there's this great story of um, uh, a monk says to his disciple, you know, do you understand the Heart Sutra? And, and the disciple said, yes, of course I hear, understand the I, heart sutra. There's no eye, ear, nose, tongue, body, mind. And then the monk goes up and pulls his nose and the disciple screams. And the monk says, I thought you said there was no nose. So, you know, it's not like that there is nothing there. Yeah. It's just really beginning to see, you know, if we can just start from... It's beginning to see the emptiness in the stories that we make, which is that you understanding that we're just caught in a story. And if we can begin to understand that, we can begin to let go of the perceptions and let go of the, of the judgments and really see things as they really are. Yeah. And even seeing things as they really are is the beginning of actually discovering emptiness. So it's not like nothing is there. In fact, Thich Nhat Hanh describes emptiness as a balloon. You know, the balloon is full and it's empty. Yeah. So that's really um, a really great example. Um, so, so again, it's like of just recognizing that it's, there's energy in, in the body and rising in the body. And as soon as you go into why is this? What's happening? That's the papanju and that's the point of understanding you're getting caught in a story and you're getting caught in an old story. Yeah, that's what you're doing, get caught in an old story, caught in a familiar story. Yeah, does that make so, sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes it can just happen just like that. So what we're doing is just slowing the process down. Well done. Exactly. Yeah, it can it can happen in seconds, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, yeah. What I want to say is, of, of course, to be able to navigate this world, we, to some extent, we have to make some meaning, but actually, even when we do that, we just know that this, that isn't necessarily real, okay? You know, we have to know that when we sit on this chair, that this chair is going to support us. But let me tell you, I've seen people sit in a chair and go right through a chair, okay? So, you know, again, you know, we, this, we, we can't, um, this, this thing of making meaning um, is part of the story. That's how the story is created. And, you know, for me, I'm, I think I'm really with this at the moment. I just, um, I just helped a, a good friend pass over uh, this weekend, pass over to the other side. And during uh, this time of um, supporting him to die, I just kept on thinking, gosh, is, is this it, you know? And, and we, we, we just become this empty shell, you know? It's a bit like, there I am, you know, after it passed over, I'm just sitting with this empty, this empty body. And, you know, it's, it's, it's like, what? We've, the whole thing about, you know, what's it about, you know, they, this about having success, am I, you know, what are these identities that we're so attached to, you know, and in a way, this is a part of an identity that you are attached to, that this thing of what you mean, I, you know, I, it's in a way I like part of my story, as we, as we heard, um, where are you, I, I think it was Patricia who was, who was saying, I like my story, the, you know, the, the, the good story, the pleasant stories, yeah? And we've become attached to these stories which become part of our identity, yeah? And so when we begin to stop making meaning of things, we begin to actually dissolve our identity. You know, we begin to start letting go of our identity. And at the, at the end of the day, which is just so clear and we get it in those moments of passing, it's like, you know, uh, my friend, what, what is his identity? You know, what, 
what did he take with him? Who, what is it? Who is he? You know? Um, and, yeah, so... To really hold it lightly and to really begin, what I say is to really begin to see how you're making meaning out of things and then ask yourself because we're at th that's activation. You can be walking along the street and thinking, oh, they're nice. Oh, they're horrible. Oh, look at them. Oh, they're big. They're thin. Oh, look at how they're, look, look at what's on their face. And we've got this running commentary going on 24-7. And what we're doing is making meaning out of what we've just, what we're seeing. None of it is real. Yeah. And sometimes people think like, well, what would life be like if I stopped making meaning out of things? And I know for myself that life has become more peaceful. I, of course, I still do make meaning out of things, but nowhere near as much. Yeah. So the, 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 the practice is, is I always say, is it possible to have thoughts without a stinker, you know? So, you know, really, because these thoughts are just so toxic, you know? And, and it is possible for thoughts to arise and not identify with them. We don't have to think them, you know? So it's not like, thought, we're not saying thoughts are bad, you know? There's so much... Uh, stimulus that we have, you know, whether whether it be walking in the streets or whether it be, you know, what's coming through on a telephone or what's coming through on the black mirror, you know, what's coming through in the newspaper, what's coming through on Fox or whatever you're, CNN, whatever you're watching. And that's, you know, so it is going to impact thoughts, yeah. But we don't have to make it mean anything. It doesn't mean to say, oh my God, I'm going to act out of this. It's like, okay. It's arisen, and does it have to have the gravitational pull on us? And this is what happens. This is, this is the freedom that actually when we stop identifying with thoughts, when we stop concretizing thoughts, when we stop making thoughts, me, mine, I, you know. And this is why this teaching of three feelings is so great, because it's like, well, if, you know, I feel abandoned, you can't take away my feelings. Well, feeling abandoned isn't a feeling. It's an, it's, it's an interpretation, it's an experience. Yeah, it's a story, okay? Not saying, you know, that's, you know, that story of, you, of that, you know, hasn't happened, but it's, 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 it's and, it's not a feeling, yeah? And if we can go to really seeing, okay, what's going on in the body, this can help give us freedom, yeah? This can begin to help give us liberation. And I love the opportunity of quoting Bob, you know, who says, you know, free yourself from mental slavery. Yeah, no one but yourself can free yourself. Yeah. Yeah. yeah thank you so yeah. much for joining us again, Donna Sarah. I'd like to uh, just dedicate the merit um, of any goodness goodwill that came of our time together. May all of this goodness and blessing, our happiness and ease, understanding and trust radiate out to all beings without exception. May it be so. Thank you for sharing your sangha, Stacy. Yeah. <laughs> and Vimala Sara the, donates the proceeds of um, mostly all of their work, certainly from the book um, that's just recently published, African Wisdom, and also from any generosity generated here today. Uh, Gabe has dropped into the chat the link to Common Ground Meditation Center. Uh, should you wish to make an offering so that these teachings can continue to be available to my friends and colleagues and fellow human beings. And thank you. I just want to say that that book is on the keels of Pamela's book that came out this year. So, Pamela mention your book yeah it's a great thank book. you okay yeah okay uh black and buddhist 
Mm, thank you. Yeah, it's really, um, you know, what I love about uh, about the book is it's 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 stories from Black Buddhists. You know, we need more of that. So to read some of our stories, you know, some of our stories, some of our lives, what we're doing. So yeah, so. Um, don't think, oh, the book isn't for me because it's Black Buddhist. You know, this is adding to the canon. You know, when I think of it, in, in certain lineages, we have the refuge tree, you know. So, you know, we have our equivalents of Kisagotami, you know. We have our equivalents of Milarepa or Dogen. So definitely um, it's a, a book for you to pick up and read. So thank you. Mm. Thank you, everyone, so Thank much. Thank you.